Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the shop and Project Snowball. Uh, today we are working on the fuel return side of the fuel system for the Cummins. I told you guys that I had an important um, modification coming up that you'll want to see if you're doing this. And, and you know, even if you still have the multi-fuel engine, doing this modification will help you. Um, first of all, let's explain what we're doing. We are going from an open drop return in the tank to a, um, a bottom feed, I guess, return line. Now, the reason you want to do that is, um, you ever look at a fish tank, how the aerator, um, some of them will pick up water and filter it and they'll drop water just back into the top of the tank. Well, that's how you get aeration in the water is just by dropping water straight in. Um, it actually pulls air from the surface down into the water. Um, in fuel, you don't want aeration. Um, when your fuel system has micro bubbles in it, it doesn't even have to be big air bubbles, but microscopic little bubbles in it. What that does when it goes into your injector pump and it gets pressurized is it causes cavitation. Uh, cavitation is just the same as um, what you'd have around your cylinder liners and all in the cooling system if you weren't running an SCA out of it. And, and what it is is the air bubble it uh, collapses at a supersonic speed and when it does that it pulls a little tiny pieces of metal off of the surrounding material. Um, in a cooling system that's bad, it eats up things. In an injector pump it's even worse. Um, so what you want to do is you want to keep air out of the fuel system. And let's, let's turn around and show you the tank here. First of all, this is an A3 tank, okay? It's not the same, not exactly the same as an A2 tank. Uh, this is stainless. Um, you know, it came with just a siphon pickup, but the, uh, the lift pump assembly from an A2 goes right in it. But there's some differences, like uh, you've got this bung here instead of um, just this one. So uh, on the A2, you'll have another quarter inch bung over here. This is, actually I guess it's about the same. No, no, because that's half inch. This is half inch here on the A2, it's a quarter inch. And uh, it's just plugged, and it would be the feed for your, um, if you had a, like a heater in the back, you know, for a 109 van or something. This is your fuel return. Now, uh, it's, it's in the same spot. Uh, A2 and A3 and it's a huge pain in the ass to get this thing lined up and this flare nut in here every time It's it's a gargantuan pain hardly ever wants to line up and it's with a bed on it's in a terrible spot, so um, What we have here is we have an abundance of uh, Fittings, okay, we've got our lift pump which has a vent built in which uh, I'm going to use I wasn't using it before it was just plugged. I was using this as the vent because this is a metered vent, okay? It only lets air out, it won't let air, well, only lets air, I don't know. It's, it's metered, so look, let's take it out and I'll show you. I don't know, some kind of pop it um, for emissions. Now this is not important, really, probably just another thing to fail, but I had my quarter inch vent line connected to that and ran out. I don't need that anymore, I'm gonna run it from here. Now, I don't like that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, and I, I really don't like the copper line running through my battery box, and across the cross member where the jack shaft is and all that shit. So I've run a new um, return line, and it's run across this cross member and up the frame on that side. Now what I'm going to do is come right here with it. The way we're going to keep air out of the line, or out of the fuel, because as you may know, this just goes to this fitting and on the other side there's nothing. It just drops fuel straight back into the tank, splashes in there, and that aerates the fuel. On this side, because we've got a larger half inch opening, that gives us room to run a reducer, a half inch to quarter inch. Now, what we're doing is we're running a quarter inch NPT to three eighths line compression fitting here to connect our return line, but We've modified this. This adapter bushing, we've turned it over 
and we've drilled it out because there was, I don't know, three sixteenths, maybe a quarter inch that wasn't threaded there, and we've threaded it from the back side. So these, these are opposing NPT threads going in from this side and going in from this side. That way we can screw this fitting in this side. I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand, but I'll show you what we're doing. We're fitting, screwing this fitting in this side, and we're screwing this fitting in this side. Okay? So what that means is our line can come in right here, go through the top of the tank, and then down here we're going to connect another piece of 3 8 DOT line and we're going to run that down into the fuel and get as close to the bottom of the tank as we can. And I may even lay it on the bottom of the tank. It doesn't matter if it moves around as long as it stays below the fuel level so you're putting fuel straight into the fuel at the bottom and you're not allowing air to get into the stream. Um, that keeps the system closed, the fuel fuel system loop closed where there's no air intrusion um, and no aeration. Uh, there, you'll still have a moderate amount of aeration just from the fuel sloshing around in the tank, but that, just dumping fuel straight in the top, aerates it a lot. Um, and the reason we're using DOT line instead of copper, now you can you can take this fitting and instead of drilling it out and tapping it for quarter inch NPT, you can just take a piece of copper, three, probably 3 eighths copper, or um, stainless even, and solder or braze it into there. So what, what we're doing really, and actually I have, I have one from another type of tank, a five ton tank, I think I wanted to show you. This, this, is, this is basically what we're building. Now this is a fuel pickup from a five ton, but uh, this is what we want. We want we want our fitting to go in the top of the tank and extend down so it's pushing fuel back in under the top level of the fuel. Um, instead of using copper or stainless, I'm using the plastic because the vibration, uh, it, copper and stainless tend to crack, uh, usually right at the, the fitting uh, or where you solder it in. So, and that's actually kind of a big problem with these is, you see they're, they are soldered in there or brazed in there too. Uh, they'll crack right here or they'll get pinholes up along this and then they won't pick up fuel. So, and now obviously picking up fuel is not a concern on the return, but um, I don't want it breaking off and then a piece of line rolling around in there and then I've got the same aeration issue again. It's really a problem with the P-pumps in particular because, um, you know, you've got six different barrels and plungers in it, so cavitation is a big concern in them, more so than it would be in um, a multi-fuel pump or even uh, the old BP or BE pump. So um, I just wanted to show you guys that. That's... Even if you're not doing a come and swap, that is a very worthwhile modification to make um, if you can find an a3 tank dude do it put it on uh, you will end your rusty crappy nastiness filter plugged up bullshit ass problems forever uh, the stainless tank going on this was one of the best things I've done for this truck um, and you can like if you find a five ton tank they 75 80 gallon tanks whatever they are 78 they're too long to go right here um, and the filler is on the wrong side so um, no no if you find a 923 the fillers on the right side no it's not what the hell am I th I'm trying to remember you have to find a tank that's on the passenger side in other words like a, a 931 tank uh, the the smaller tank or 936 tank uh, they'll probably go on there. Uh, some of the LMTV tanks will go on and fit in the same space. But the big 80-gallon tanks are too long. So, like, a tank like that, that'll fit. Um, but, let me see. I don't remember. I think the other side is bigger. Yeah. The bigger tanks like this, they're not going to fit in that space. Now, if you're, if you are or you know somebody who's a good welder who can weld stainless you can cut it down you know shorten it and then it'll fit there 
but that puts your filler um, in the wrong spot. Not really a big deal like this because it's still where you can get to it, but um, if you find that one off a of 923 AO or A1 where this filler is on the top, um, that puts it under the bed and really difficult to fill. So just a little fuel tank advice there. If you want to uh, try to find an A3 tank, I know they're kind of like hen's teeth anymore. They're hard to find and they're expensive when you do, but it is... If you're going to keep your deuce and you want to run it on the road and be problem free, that is one of the best modifications you can make. It's well worth the money. If you got to pay 500 bucks for an A3 tank, I'd pay it. I didn't pay that for mine. Obviously, at the time, I paid 100 bucks for it. Hell of a deal. But uh, glad I did it when I did. So get back to work on your trucks, guys. I don't know what else to tell you about it. Now you know what you need to do. Um, Thanks for watching. You know, if you like the video, hit the little like button down below, subscribe. Uh, please go in and check and make sure you've got the little bell button uh, pushed because you know how this YouTube stuff is going lately where um, you may be subscribed but you're not seeing all the videos because the little bell thing isn't clicked. Go ahead and do that if you care. Uh, check out our sponsors in the description below and uh, we will see you on the next one. Later.